What's going on my fellow from all brothers and sisters? All right, so today's video is kind of tractor related, but not tractor related. If that makes sense, stay tuned. You're gonna find out what I mean. All right, so today's video, I wasn't gonna post it because I figured, eh, it was no big deal, but you know, there's some people out there who hasn't done it and they might wanna know how. We're gonna go ahead and replace, cover my tag, <laughs> we're gonna replace the ramps on the trailer. So the problem with these ramps is they're only about four foot long, so they're kind of short. Um, another thing wrong with these ramps is somebody welded a big ass three inch pipe on there when it's only to be a small pipe on there and it, it's hung up on this rebar that people stuck on here <laughs> when you try to open this ramp up and the fact of the channel is turned the opposite way so what they did was they welded some rebar on this side to give it a little bit of traction well i fabbed up some new ramps out of i believe it's four inch channel instead of the three inch channel so they're heavier they're longer and they're a little bit wider um, and also all my channel is flipped around the opposite way to help with the traction So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take you in the shop. I'm gonna show you what I already started making as far as the um, The ramps themselves and I already got everything pretty much fabbed up The only thing that I'm gonna have to go ahead and do is these drop legs right here um, I'm gonna have to start cutting those up and make them But I'm not gonna do it until I get the new ramps installed on here so I can get the measurements from the ground but as you see see it's starting to Give some bends and everything in here from the twisting just all this makeshift crap that somebody's put on these <laughs> ramps through the years just isn't really quite up to par but anyway so that's that's today's video and then um i was gonna take you over here <coughs> i didn't really do any videos on everything that i added to this trailer but i went ahead and i welded on you know a piece of i-beam you know welded it capped the end made it real nice and smooth welded the winch plate on here Put a 12,000 pound winch on there from Harbor Freight. Went ahead and put another piece of channel across the front. Mounted the toolbox on here. And I have the battery and everything in here. The controls, all my cables, everything for the winch inside here. And I went ahead and mounted one of the solar panels with the MPP uh, T-Charger to keep the battery topped off. Um, it's got a 650 cold cranking amp battery in there. Um, works the winch perfectly. And so far everything's coming along really good. I'm gonna go ahead and make up a new spare tire jack, well, a spare tire holder, because for the time being, I just had it strapped and chained on here. It came loose last time I took it down the road, but it's not going anywhere. She's tight. <laughs> it's just hanging to the side. And then I went ahead and I put the drop leg style um, jack on the front because the one that was on there was terrible. So anyway, so let's head on into the shop and uh, I'll show you guys so far what I have made up. Oh yeah, by the way, this will be the next thing I'm taking off. I got the new, um, the coupler um yeah i can't remember what the hell it's called now the new piece of uh, c-channel that's a coupler i'm going to weld to the front and i'm going to take this breakaway off of here because it's not really necessary that was on there for when this was a rental trailer i don't really need it so i'm going to go ahead and put the, the new piece back on the front and then put that coupler down on the front where it goes because it didn't come with this this was only because it was a rental the jack itself is supposed to be underneath there right there that's where it originally was when the trailer was new so and then the last thing I'm going to end up doing in this trailer, well, the last two things, is I'm going to go ahead and repaint the trailer, fresh it up with some new black, and then I'm going to rewire the whole trailer and put new lights in the back. But that's going to be for a future video. All right, so we're back down here at the other end of the shop. And so far, this is the second ramp that I'm going to and I ground down everything on the inside. Um, got it all ready for weld. I tacked this together last night. And then that right there is going to be a support bar that's going to run across underneath all the pieces of angle. Uh, let's go ahead and go on inside and I'll show you so far what I got made up. Alright, so here's what we got made so far. So I got the, the ramp all laid out. I laid it on a piece of I-beam so that way I can make sure I get all of them nice and straight. But I got those laid out to, it's like six and three quarters between each slat, which is going to be nice. The other one I think only had five four or five angle 
This one's got a six angle. Um, the proper size pipe, as you see. And then, let me see what this was. Yeah, it's four inch that I made this out of versus the three that was on there. I just want to make sure it's as heavy duty as the trailer is for hauling anything I needed to crank up on this thing. And I do have a center ramp that I'm going to use temporarily, like every so often if I ever have something I need to run a center wheel up or um, drag another plow up or something like that. I found actually on the side of a highway. So we're going to retrofit it to go in the middle of this. But this is the ramp so far. And like I said, it's much longer than the other one. The other one was about, I don't know, 46 inches, somewhere in there. And five foot. And I think the other one was only 12 inches wide, and I went 17. So definitely much wider, much better, much heavier. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up. And then, um, so, so far what I did was, besides cutting all the metal down and getting everything all pre-fit, um, I went ahead and put in the angle. And I did, opted to go with the one by two instead of a two by two, because I wanted it to have a little bit different of a pattern going up it. Um, just for traction, so that was my own preference, but you can go with a 2x2 two two if you want to. That's your prerogative. Um, let me go ahead and grab the piece of metal and I'll show you that center strap that I was talking about. So basically, no, no, I gotta get it popped in there. So basically what I'm gonna do is, once I get it in, that's gonna go down the center and get welded in both ends in the middle which will ever keep anything from ever bending and flexing any of those pieces of channel. So that's the plan. So let's go ahead and um, get set up in the stand and I will do a little bit more tack welding on this. And then I guess I'll uh, let you guys follow along while I do everything else. So stay tuned. All right, I think we're set up good enough. You guys should be able to see me okay. It might get a little bit noisy because you're kind of right next to the welder. So I probably won't talk a ton, but you'll just be able to see what I'm doing. Packed up and then we're gonna take it outside and find a well. So let's get to it. nice crispy bacon sound that's a good sound when it comes to weld just make sure you always keep that tip cleaned out I have uh, nozzle jelly that goes in there so every so often tap it out clean it out with your pair of pliers or your needle nose these right here go inside clean all that crud out of there taming with the tip clean that up right there my wire brush with me. Make sure all that gunk is out of there. And then, I don't even know if you guys can see what I'm doing here. Yeah, you can see what I'm doing. Take the tip, coat it. Take the tip of your gun. Don't go too far. You don't want to cover up your ports right here for your gas. Just the end. Put a little bit on that nozzle. Well, not the nozzle. When you're uh, the tip of your wire, screen nozzle back on. And now you're good for a little bit more weld. Make sure that stays clean. That'll make a huge difference for you. It really sucks when you get a really beautiful weld going and you got a build up in there. And then all of a sudden it decides to crap it out. And then it gets all inside your weld. Never good. All right, I want to attack the other side real quick. And then this one's ready to head outside. And then we're gonna bring the other one in and 
and do everything I did right here. Now, no, these aren't my welding gloves. My welding gloves are here. I'm going to be tacking it, not final welding. Last thing you want to do is have gloves like this. Do a final weld, because you'll burn your finger pretty bad. Alright, let's go ahead and uh, get the other one set up. Now, the reason I have these sitting on these I beams like this is because if, if you don't have a floor that's perfectly straight, try to weld all those brackets in, they're all going to be crooked. I put on the I-beam so I can push the step, the ramp down tight to it, and then that way I know it's flat on the other side. I'll show you the other one after we get this tacked up. I'm going to lay this out first with the measurements and then we're going to drop all these pieces in. I can't see making a video showing me uh, measuring this out. You know, on a second thought, I guess I ain't going to hurt to show you guys what I'm doing here. Alright, so the first ones, I made them four. Actually, here's what I use right here so you can see the opposite side. So it's just a one by two channel, quarter inch thick. Alright, I got all the smalls going towards the bottom. But I'll work out to the other one. It's four and three quarters of an inch to the first one. And then, no, I'm sorry, four and a half. Four and a half to the first one. And then it worked out to be six and three quarters between each one. Let's see if it works out the same. It should. the other side and then get these lined up exactly where they go. It saves a lot of measuring time. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and pop these in and I'll bring the camera over closer and show you. So basically I'm taking all the smalls going towards the bottom. Now most likely these beams have moved a little bit common. So put one in and go ahead and just drive it on down and then what I found was the easiest way is just to stop on it. Pop it right in place. Alright, see now you want to take your square, go down this way, and make sure you get it square straight down. Take a hammer and tap it. chasing every single one of them around. Good. 
good. Alright, tack this one in place. this one well not towards the floor we're gonna go ahead and roll this one again I'm gonna keep it towards the top side and then we're gonna get welded in from there and that way when the ramps are up that goes up against the trailer nice and flat and then when the ramps are down it'll extend away just the right amount so let's weld it up outside and I'll figure it out. All right, let's take these out and final weld them. All right, let's get to it.
that side because now I can get the pipe welded on um, and I'll flip it and get this bar weld going a little better and then um, I don't really need to do full welds now on the other side of this not with the way I'm doing this but I might just tack them in three more points so all right let's go ahead and get this thing welded on All right, so now, I'm not gonna do a full bead of weld on these pipes. What if something ever happened to these pipes in the future? Say one tour, say something happened. At least I can grind and cut these three spots off much easier than I can try to grind and cut off a whole entire run, run length bead. Plus, this right here is not gonna be a stress point because it's gonna have those, um, basically the extended jack underneath this step right here, where this uh, ramp right here which is going to take the weight of any of the tractors or anything pushing down. So this will not get the amount of weight that that jack's going to get. So I'm not going to do a full weld on this, but it's a nice strong, you know, there's welds. I mean, not worried, there's a two inch long weld and that's about an inch and a half and about an inch and a half. So she ain't going anywhere. Anyway, all right, let's go ahead and uh, let's flip this thing over. remember to reconnect the grounds. You don't want to have a ground? It ain't going to weld very well. Alright, same thing. Let's tack the three on the back. Alright. She ain't going nowhere anytime soon. Alright, I'm going to run a bead of weld up the end of this angle real fast. this thing fully welded on the ends and then the beads around the sides. Alright, that's looking good there. I'm gonna run a bead of weld across the bottoms next. Alright. I'm going to start doing a little bit more welding here. I'm not going to burn up this whole video just watching me do this. Let me go ahead and finish doing some of these welds in the corners, and then I'll be back. All right, my friends. And that's how I got to grind it up, clean it up a little bit. But that's how, in the end, everything's going to come out. And um, this will be the first part of the video for the ramps. So the second part of the video is going to be bringing the trailer bent down here cutting off the uh, end plate, pulling the rod out, sliding these on, getting it measured up for the jacks underneath, and then um, painting them up. So make sure you guys hit that notification bell, like, subscribe, and share. Hit the second part of this video to so make sure you don't miss it. And uh, that's it until next time. Thanks for watching.